Four. Go. God. Careful. Hello and welcome to Raw Impressions, <laughs> featuring Lou Barlow and Adele Barlow. Now, what the, the fuck, fuck were you guys? <laughs> I mean, I know where you were. You were on a family trip. But you usually do your podcast while you're away. Why not this time? Like I said, I knew, I knew where you were. I knew you were gone. But I think, why would that... Why, why didn't you do your podcast while you were away? Space. Time to tell What's him. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> what? You tell me. What's happening? What's going on? We simply didn't have enough room. Mm-hmm. I have so much to say. Okay. So much to say. I Aye. mean, if four track man Adele. will. Oh. Adele. <laughs> yes. What's the real word? What's really going on? I'm happy to give it. Tell me all about it. Okay, now? Should I go? Go. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> I do. I have so much to say. So much to say. Welcome to Raw Impressions, everyone. Okay, carry oh. on, you do. Oh, my gosh. Carry on for a while. <laughs> um, you know, and don't forget about us next time. Mm. <laughs> or do whatever. Do what you need to do. Love you. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, it's good to be back. It's good to be back uh, recording the pod with you. I definitely missed it. Lou and I were in Los Angeles for a week. It was our kids spring break. And so some people go to Florida, some people go up to Maine around here. And uh, we went back to LA for a week and stayed in our old neighborhood of Silver Lake. Yes, we did. Um, I just want to get this out of the way. I have my hair in my face, not because I'm a (laughs) pretentious asshole. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm just hiding my face again because I'm so red. Yeah. You've been, you've been, uh, I had a shot of presenting a little red lately. I had a shot for those watching at home or watching us at home. Yeah. Um, yeah, my face is super red again. I had a shot of espresso about 45 minutes ago. Uh Uh-huh. Anyway, we went to Los Angeles because that's... And you also got a little sunburned in I did. LA. Mm-hmm. I did. I did. Mm-hmm. It's a, kind of a double whammy, and I'm feeling self-conscious. Oh, I'm not above it. It's okay. Cover we went it to, up. We went to Los Angeles because that's what we do. Yep. We like to go back there, and it's kind of like, you know, some people go, oh, we're snowbirds, and we go to Florida every year. We go to Arizona. It's like our second home. Well, I, I'll just say it. LA is like my second home. Yeah. Yeah. It was our first home what for was quite that? a while. I don't know. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Um, it was, it was our fir- like a little... Ch- ch- anyway. Yeah. Okay. It was a glitch. It was a glitch. That would be called a glitch. Um, I like that song by Taylor Swift, by the way. Glitch. Oh, there's one called Glitch mm-hmm. on the new record? It's on Midnight's, I think, the extended thing. Yes. I what that's called, but okay. Okay. anywho, moving on. Um, a lot of Taylor talk, too. Um, yeah, well... She's got it. Okay, anyway. Yeah. So... <laughs> Where was I? Now Taylor just blew it out of my mind. Oh, well, so why didn't we do... Why? Where have we been? Why haven't we recorded the podcast, Nelly? Because well, we, we have to, recorded previously. That's right. I took the, I took the microphones. Yes. Um, you took we up were, half the suitcase you were sharing I with did. Hendrix. How I did. Greedy. I took up half the suitcase with all of this podcast paraphernalia. Yep. Um, we got there and we just never, never pulled it out because... Um, we didn't have room for yeah, it because we need we yeah. need we need a little bit of privacy. We do. It's it's true, and I I kind of knew immediately upon entering our Airbnb, which we can talk more about. We could talk about our Air. We stayed in an Airbnb in Silver Lake, um, like right off of Sunset and right near 
Cafe Stella. That's all I'll say. Walking distance from the places that both you and I lived. Yes. Walking distance to my previous home for many years and Lou's previous home. A nice steep staircase. I, I could walk a very steep staircase right to my, my street. Yes, yes, where on, you lived for a hill. long time. I don't know what they mm-hmm. named that hill. What are, don't they don't know. really seem to have names. There's a there's Franklin Hills, which we could see from our Airbnb, and then there's oh, the right. hill. The next hill going east was the one that both you and I lived on, and then there's a hill after that, and then there's a hill after that, and then there's Dodger Stadium on another hill. Yes. Anyway. Upon entering the home, we realized there was literally no privacy because... Even if Lou and I, for us to do, for you and me, yeah, to do the podcast, to sit down with two microphones, right, and headphones on to like block out noise and to block that out would have also been kind of unsafe because the Airbnb had a pool. It had a little cute pool like that the guy tucked into his tiny yard. I mean, it was like he'd used every little inch of Mm. that and it was just concrete. It wasn't like grass there was no grass or anything it was just sort of like this concrete backyard that he plunked a cool little pool in cool pool. grateful amazing um cold cold <laughs> it was a salt water pool so it's not heated and it still is you know believe it or not la does have seasons and it was it's kind of like spring there still too just like here so it's cooler it was on the cooler side and uh the house also had all these sliding pocket doors which i love a pocket door that's great. That being said, these had like huge gaps like underneath the they didn't like they weren't like flush with the floor or anything. So there's a lot of like air pockets and I couldn't have had my headphones on and is what if Izzy fell in the pool? I don't Well, she would swim to the side because she can swim now. But I know, but nonetheless, it's still You're absolutely we had we we I was sleeping Kids would have been hovering listening to every little thing we I, say. They would. They already think that you know, we're talking about them all the time. All the time. Anyway, so. this would just be like, "Hey, we're going to go put on headphones and talk into microphones about you because they think we're always talking about them." Truth. And we generally are. Of course. We are generally I mean, what parents are not to, I mean, that's that's our job. When they come up to me, either of them, Izzy or Hendrix, mm-hmm. you guys are talking about me. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I love your response. Your response is, of course we are. <laughs> <laughs> what else are we going to talk about? <laughs> so I was I was in a bedroom. Parents where, are lame. You are our full-time job. We are going to constantly <laughs> figure you out and help. And um, yeah, it's like. We are. We are tough. Totally talking about you we behind your back. We are obsessed with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in. A, I was sharing a bedroom with Hendrix. You were sharing a, a bedroom with Izzy. There was one kind of living room and, an, and a small dining room and a, a small kitchen, and the outdoor and the pool. There was no. There was no space for you and I to sit and talk. No. And and when that realization hit me, when I realized that we weren't going to do the podcast as we do fifty one weeks out of the year yeah or we did last Hell year yeah um i was like i actually went i sort of disengaged mm. from podcast mode mm-hmm. and i started to have what can only be described as a vacation <laughs> which i don't know you don't y'all don't know me that well but i'm not really a i don't vacate very often no you don't usually take any time off i mean no. even Whenever we've done any sort of family trip back to LA or wherever, you are always working, like always doing something. And the last two times, you and I both have done like live podcast things or we're recording when we're there or you're doing a solo show or it's tagged on to a dino show or, 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 you know, it's just there's or you're like oh someone's calling me from italy to do an interview at four o'clock on zoom while we're on vacation you're like, what right. you know so there's right. always that's true i didn't do something. anything like the, the full complosion record was announced coming soon on joyful noise recordings walk through me the new lp by the full complosion out june 28th on cd cassette Vinyl LP and digitally completely free. Their first album of new music in 25 years. John Davis and Lou Barlow are the folk explosion. Yes. During our during our congrats. Yes, but I didn't do any 
promotional related stuff. I barely posted about it. I vacated. I, I gave zero, almost zero. Didn't, didn't do my weekly meeting with John and Joyful Noise Forgot recordings. Forgot about that meeting even. See, that's I vacated too. Yeah. Wow. So we, we were like, we were just kind of like in our, zone, in our little family zone Yeah. for eight full days. That's true. We did. We, we, we were there for the full spring break. We were like, no fucking around. We're just plunking our asses there. And, you know, we had thought about doing some work things while we were there. Because we always do, it seemed logical. But yeah, like when we got there, all of a sudden, it, it just was kind of like, no. I have to say. I needed the break, to be I honest. Needed the it's break. been pretty relentless. So. And then also where we were staying, it has such sentimental yeah. weight to us. Mm. And not just like sentiment. I mean, but the memories that live in those hills right. where we were, where we were walking were places that we walked, you know, over 20 years ago. For sure. As, you know, younger versions of ourselves. Not knowing um, each other, not too. Not knowing each other or Live knowing it. each other or like... Yeah, um, majority of the time had so no idea. Much, it was yeah. like there were there were so many things for me to personally sift through. Yeah. On Sunday, so we arrived on Saturday. Mm-hmm. On Sunday, um, we... Hendrix and I, after we had gone, we went to the eat this really comfort food Mexican place called Casita, Casita del Campo, del Campo yep. which is, you know. On Hyperion. We'd both been numerous times. So it was nice to go back. Yes. And then after that, Hendrix and I took off and walked the staircase up the hill. Yes. There's stairs in They're Silver Lake. Esther's Stairs. There's probably some other one. Uh, there's a, oh, I can't remember the name can't of the street. I the name. I should have done oh. my... Oh, research. Oh, there's different stairs, but the thing that's four track man, if four track <laughs> man could just come in interject. right now, just interject the 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 name of the the street that is associated with these stairs, that would be appreciated. <laughs> Happy, Happy to, to help. help. The Landa Land Street, Street stairs. Landa Land Street ascends the hill and becomes stairs. And those are the ones you walked up, also known as Esther Steps. <laughs> the Silver Lake stairs are really interesting and good for your glutes. Yeah. So that was that was one adventure going up the stairs. Yeah. The next day on oh Monday. Oh my gosh, Monday. This was This was our only kind of scheduled thing I did. Well, it was a, I was a little surprised at first. Adele, she scheduled <laughs> us to go horseback riding in Griffith Park. Yes. Which meant driving to the end of of, of Beachwood Canyon Drive, is that it? Yeah. You go right all under, the way right to the end. Right underneath the Hollywood sign. You go all the way to the end, and then there's this big... And it had been raining quite a bit <gasps> Which, when we got there. Which, by the way, driving Beechwood Canyon all the way to the end is super cool. And what was the name of that area right that you enter there? Is it called Hollywood Holly, Land? Hollywood Land. Hollywood Land. Yes. Like a, it's amazing. There's a little sign and yes, everything. It's originally, so cool. Originally, the Hollywood sign was Hollywood Land, because it was like this little housing development that they built there. Probably in the 30s. Four sure. track man, help me out. Help out. <laughs> um, they began building Hollywood Land in 1923. So yeah, so but there's at the top of this this road of the drive, it just sort of dead ends in, in this horse ranch. Mm -hmm. And Adele <laughs> scheduled, she said, I want to go horseback riding. And my first impulse was like, I seized up because um, I fear... I fear a lot of things, but I think they're reasonable fears. <laughs> I do fear riding horses at my advanced age because yeah. they will throw you. They can. They can kick you. They yes, can. They can. I was th thrown from a horse when I was they young. just fall off if they bounce too fast. I was thrown off a horse when I was young, oh. but it didn't deter me from riding. I remember I got back up and got right on that horse. I wow. loved it. I mean, I really liked the few times that I did horseback ride as, as a kid. And when I, I say kid, I mean like Izzy's age. Mm -hmm. Really liked it. Really enjoyed it. So I was not really like, that didn't, that's not why I'm afraid of riding a horse. It's just that it's I, adult I, fears. I, I'm, I'm fragile. Yeah. You, I mean, you just reached to pull this I curtain from behind you. I literally just reached behind me, guys, and I, I went to yank this curtain shut before we recorded because it was too bright on me. 
and I have now strained my arm. Yeah. And I may need to do some repair work after this podcast. Yeah, and, and I shattered yeah. my collarbone and within the last few years. I've had a hernia. I'm like, you Slip just can't. Down ice. So yep. I'm thinking, like, if I get thrown from a horse, it's going to, something's going to break. So yes. I was a little, <laughs> just something is going to break. It's going to, it's not going to, we it's have, not going to be great. We have learned that, like, after 40, there's so many things you should never do. I know. You were complaining. You were like, oh, and I'm like, why did you? Why, did, Why did I bother closing that curtain? I know. That was really dumb of me. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. So anyway, but yeah, so you were, I think that was a very healthy fear. I had some apprehension, but, but I was yeah. like, but I, but I kept it. I tapped it down. I'm like, she wants to do this. I'm not going to lead with the fear. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let this happen. Okay. I'm going to get on the horse. I'm going to do it. Okay. We're going to yep. do it. So leading up to it, I was suppressing my fears. Well, Izzy asked to ride a horse, by the way. That's why. She did. I, oh. Yes. That's why I scheduled it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. Well, I, mi- I missed that in the blizzard of information, of domestic information that I yes. live in day little, to day. A little tidbit there. Yeah. So, All of, uh, so um, I was surprised. Okay. And But also like, you know, and I, I can't say, honestly, mm-hmm. uh, Adele, I, at any point was I excited. I knew that I was going to be enduring this. Yeah, you were so quiet. You had this And I was quiet just like, do not. I was like, I was holding on. I'm like, don't be a dick. Don't let on that you are going to simply endure this ride. Don't. Don't let on. Don't let on. And I kind of don't want to know if I did. I'm sure I did in some way. I'm sure I betrayed, my, betrayed what I was thinking in my anxiety. But the day before you were like... I can't remember. All of a sudden, you're like, "Wait a minute! Horseback riding is dangerous." I can't remember what made you. What made Because they of made that? me sign the waivers. Yes, they, the they, waiver. That was so. <laughs> the waivers funny. came through, and I just broke <laughs> out in like a cold sweat. I was that like, was "Fucking hilarious. Holy shit! This is a terrible idea. What am I doing?" I was like, "That was fucking killer." It, you were like, "They had this line in there that said riding horses is inherently dangerous," and I'm like, "Christ, no! I can't." Do, oh, s- spam call. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to take care of that. But uh, it, yes, I was like inherently dangerous. I can't put my child and my stepson on a horse. This is wrong. I cannot do this. Me, you said to me, you're like, and, and then it was like, there, I had my in. I had my in. Like, do I do I take that in and go, well, yeah, it is. I told I you. I had I'm my- afraid. I was, I was like, I, I was like, hold on. And I, and I was like, nope. And I, I think, I think my message at that point to you was like, <laughs> "Don't worry, it's going to be okay." You did. I did. Yeah. Yes. You did. You yes. did. And in fact, you were like almost yes, um, blasé about nonchalant your, yeah, about you, it. You were just Fuck like, yeah. you were like, of course it's inherently dangerous, but it's going to be fine. It's going to be totally fine. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to be totally great. And I'm like, it is. It's going to be totally great. And you were like, yeah. It's going to be awesome. We're going to go. We're going to horseback ride. And I'm sitting there sweating and I'm privately going, oh, no, what if I hurt my family? And this is like, I'm. what if I'm leading them to their, like, death on a horse? And this is inherently dangerous. It says so, so in the waiver. So we're there. We're, we, get to the, we get to the ranch. We're all lined up. The woman is giving us the, she's like, you know. Well, I would also like to say that, interestingly, I could talk for hours and hours about this, but uh, if anyone's interested, we could do part two, three, four. We might have to, because we're running out of time. No, we're not. We got all the time in the fucking world. We missed got to pick up Hendrix in like 10 minutes. Oh, dear God. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Okay. So anyway, school's done real soon. Um Basically, we get there, and I, this this is just one of those things where I, I you have to take in the experience. You have to go like, oh, aha, uh-huh, I'm learning as I go, because no one there, like, greeted us. You know, they were like, hi, how's it going? Welcome to da, da, da. And, you know, you stand over here, and you go over here, and whatever. It's like, you just go up there. It had rained the, the two previous days super muddy so it was so muddy so muddy and you don't know if your foot is sinking into mud manure piss 
all of the above. And um, Def- definitely all of the above. all of the above. So I was really grateful that we all were fairly reasonably dressed for this occasion, um, which is like, you know, jeans, sneakers, whatnot. Yeah, I but, wore some. I wore like my most denim-y denim. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and so you get up there and I just kind of like find my way to the office or something. And then I had to sign one more waiver and I'm like, oh, God. And then some other people are kind of wandering around. Like, again, there's no instruction. So we're just sort of like meandering about. And then these other two women come like near the end who are also part of our ride. It's a group. You know, you're just signing up for an hour of horseback riding. So whoever's going to be there, right? (laughs) And these two women, I they were dressed not appropriately for the ride. But, you know, they made it. They made it and they did it. But one of them had like full on platform shoes on, like a little white crop top. Again, this was mud, you guys, shit and mud. And this was not like some she she, like you're thinking LA glam horse ranch. No, it was, it was like dirty, muddy. The barn was falling apart. They were also incessantly selfie. The, the women obsessively took their every step their, of the way. Their hand was projected yeah. almost the whole time in front trying of them. Trying on helmets. Try yes, they did. They, they did it from signing the helmet. A waiver. Signing the <laughs> here I am signing my life away. Like, <laughs> and I just want to add, like, here here's the thing. I've been kind of dreading this moment, and then we got there, like, and nothing that I saw was alleviating any of my I was going to say, this probably didn't make you feel any better. Because I looked out and there's just a bunch of horses, a a lot of horses, dozens of horses, all just like, all just on fucking, just sitting in these muddy pens. And I have a real problem with animals and pens. And like, I'm to the point now where I can barely go to a zoo. And I'm just like, here's all these miserable horses vying for food and snorting at each other and and i'm like oh they're not happy they're not happy i'm like these are not happy creatures and then the woman gets up and gives us the whole go down you know runs down the whole thing the last thing she says Mm -hmm. what did she say she said she said oh first she said is anyone sort of uneasy about this and i i raised my hand I was proud of you for that. Because I'm like, give me the right horse. Give me your like yes. most fucking docile, yes. <laughs> beaten down beast that has just that has just completely given up. I want I want an animal that its spirit has been so It can feel your fear through the saddle. Yes. Like I don't want anything you know, it's like I want some, Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, that's why I did that. Even though, yes, the, the the animal misery was triggering me right away. I can't and, say that I thought their horses were miserable. That's that's well, something that you're supposed to be running. Okay. They're but not supposed to How many to... horses in this world are just out there free and running? So many are in pens and stables. And... I know it's a fucking bummer. Okay. It well, bums me out. We also like, you know, put cats and dogs in our home and we, you hey, know, I You know how I feel about cats. They should be free. I know, but you also just feel that they're like basically disposable. If one gets hit by a car, you just get another one. Well, I lived a good life and then I got hit by a car. (laughs) Better than me trapped in a house, like staring just balefully into the the wild and reacting. I mean, I... I'm just saying, we use animals, we, we do. We do, We I do, know. we I, use them. We eat them, we use them, we torture them. But here, I, but here, anyway, <sighs> she says, she says. God. It's like, she says. Yes. She goes, so horses really like to stay to the edge of the path. If anyone here is. Afraid of heights. Afraid of heights. You should know. That we are going to be at the edge of the path. And I was like. Oh, no. Because at that point, I'm like, I already give it. I'm like, I'm going to ride the horse, but it's cool. I know the paths to Griffith Park. Park. They're, 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 they're wide. They're so wide. They're wide. Yep. You know, so I'm like, we're just going to be trotting down in the middle. Hey, maybe even we're going to be trotting on the, the hillside. You know, sure. like where we're, you know, there, there's no drop off. Yeah. But in Griffith Park, these wide, wide, very safe paths actually do have significant drop offs. Oh, and profound. We're, we're at the top yeah. of Griffith Park at this point. Yes. Near, which, the, near the top. Folks, if you don't and know. And I'm like, I went, oh my <laughs> fucking God. This is very high. It's high. It's high up. Very 
very, very high up. We're yes. talking like mountains. <laughs> so we, we get on those horses. Hendrix and Izzy are, by the way, totally cool. Cool as cucumbers. Cool. Mm-hmm. So now, Even beca- though Izzy's been on three horses. It ends up on her third horse, That's which right. was they making found- me nervous, by the way. But I didn't say anything to you. I know, exactly, because they're like, they're like what, what are they doing? So finally, they get Izzy on a horse that I guess is not going to buck her off or whatever. Who's? I mean, they're, I'm like, hopefully this, they're just making the right decisions here. That's nice that they're, you know, trying different options. I know. Um, yeah. So we get on these horses and we start the march. <laughs> the march. I mean, this is a slow, there's like seven you horses. You go single file. Single file. Yeah. Slowly, just with the horse going. Boom, boom. I mean, it, it feels, it feels a bit like. I don't want to say I'm never going to take you horseback riding I don't ever say again. It. You're making it sound like I, I fucking tortured you. Didn't you didn't do this. You didn't, there's no way you could have known. Hun. I this did not know it there's was going no to be way. like that. I really so, didn't. I thought so we would be like casually we, trotting in the middle. I, I, or a meadow. Or a meadow. which In the middle of a meadow. Okay, and to, and, I, yes, yes, but no. We, we, we were like, we let were me on. just interject one last thing. <laughs> it's just that... The previous time I had horseback ridden, and the only time I had horseback ridden in L.A. was when we lived in L.A. Which 12 was- years ago, and I took my oldest stepdaughter, Hannah Lohr, uh horseback riding, and it was chill, and it was, like, it was low, nice. and we were in the and middle of, the, like, a... It was at the bottom of the hill. It was at the bottom of the hill, and... Anyway, so, it was no, very we were on a, like, we mellow. Were, we so that was my only experience with like it. Like a procession. Like we could have, I mean, I felt like I was like, <laughs> oh my God, it could have been the 1800s and I'm just sort of a prisoner of war on like, on on horseback, just with my head, my head hanging down the horse, just like, <clears throat> and just this procession, but right on the fucking edge of the cliff. They were literally, they're 2,000 pound bodies were like balancing on the edge, the edge of this very wide path. The horse was like, I know, I'm going to go right to the fucking and that's, edge. That's their instinct. The woman explained their instinct is to walk on the edge. And I'm like, Why? hey, fair, maybe because then they can see predators coming up. And they can oh. see it from the side because they don't want to like, they Oof. don't want, if something's coming up the hill to get them, they, they want to be prepared. They want to be prepared for that. And they also want to have perspective of what's coming down at them. Fair enough, horses. This is, a, this is a vestige of their, of their wild selves that they are indulging and God bless them because they can't indulge. They can indulge so little of what they are meant to do and what they want to do as intelligent, beautiful creatures. We are riding them. <laughs> If they want to ride on the fucking edge of the cliff, and 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 she's like, oh, and they will never fall. I guarantee you, she said, I guarantee you, they will not fall. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll take that. But I'll tell you what, we started that march, yeah. and it was like, <laughs> oh, I was like, this is like... <laughs> I have times was- <laughs> where I've been in vehicles, like on edges of cliffs, yes. you know, all over the sort of touring world that I've I've been on the edge of cliffs in like Chile. And those times are just their endurance test. It's like, I'm going to hold on and I am not going to have a panic attack. And so we're on the horses. And yeah, thank you, Adele, for not at any point. And we were, it was an hour long and it was an hour. Yeah. And, um... There was a little bit of a respite in the middle where we, you and I spoke with one of the guides. Yes. And it, it took a lot of tension away. Yes. Um, which was really nice. But then at the, at the end, we're coming back. We looped all the way up and then started the procession back down the hill. <laughs> you and I are at the back of the line and we're like, <sighs> we have to relive every twist and turn that we just did. But now on the other side. Yeah. Meanwhile, Izzy's like, Izzy's like three horses in front of us kind of moving around. And you start to, you, you're like, you start to not yell at Izzy, but you're like, Izzy, Izzy, watch it, honey. What? And I'm like, and she goes, Lou, Lou, sh- she's moving. And I'm like, I know, I know. I'm like, I, <laughs> I got I, so I scared can't. because I saw Izzy start kicking her left foot. And they said that you kick your the horse on the side that you want it to go. And the left side was the edge. So she was on the cliff. So her she was trying to pull it to the right while kicking her left foot. And I God know. bless that that horse was like, 
paid no mind and obviously did not jump off the fucking cliff because I was like, she's directing it to, to go off the cliff because that was the directive. That would be the oh, directive. Man. That was the thing is like, I'm like, I was just concentrating so hard <sighs> and holding it together for myself and then really just going like, I wanted to be strong for you. For one thing, you were right <laughs> behind me because, yeah. I mean, these are what, t- what, what nightmare vacations are made of is like moments like that where a couple, mm. a married couple, even people that are deeply in love like you and I can mm. crack. Mm. Something can crack because it's out of our control. Daddy's in a place that's out of his control. Mm. Mama's feeling, and then you, you're like, you want me to take more control. I'm not able to take that control. Izzy is like, oh, it's Izzy just, is directing it was just a the moment horse. though to ask. Izzy is I directing like, the horse oh off the cliff. Yeah. You're like, and like, Lou, Lou, she's direct. And I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I don't think you said anything. I don't think I said, I think I kept my fucking mouth shut. But I, what I would have said was, I know I can't think about that right now. Oh no, you did say that. No, you <laughs> said, I? you said, you just, all you said was, I can't think about that right now. <laughs> I'm that's like, right. That's if I right. Add, if I add my I child plunging up, being crushed by a two thousand pound horse rolling down the fucking mountainside in Griffith Park, I'm gonna lose my <laughs> mind. I'm like, no. I'm like, I am teetering on the edge because yeah. you and I both. But then I stopped talking too because I was like, I know we were silent. That was the thing. Yeah, like, and that's I, when I, I knew it was. I, like, I only I was like, said you like, were there with me. I'm I like, was you totally knew there. It. Well, I only said one thing one time, which was Hizzy. Please don't kick. And I was like, Lou, please tell her. And that was the only thing I said. You it did. Wa- it wasn't a lot. It was just one little thing. we still thing. had fucking 20 minutes yeah. after that. But I I mean, when I saw her little leg go up in the air and her foot like go down to <laughs> kick on the left side, my heart like leapt over the okay. edge of that cliff. I was like, well. So I looked it up. And then since that day. Yes. I've had several. I've had. I've been thinking a lot about my acrophobia. Okay. Because I've got it. Oh, okay. And I think you do too. Yeah. <laughs> God. Guess what? What? Only two to five percent of the population have acrophobia. Really? Yes. That makes me feel worse. I had a dream the other huh. night that I, I I've had dr- so I've been we're... having dreams about heights. I always have actually I always have dreams about high oh. being up high cliffs. Well, you know how I feel about heights. I go bonkers. I yeah. go fucking bonkers. It's so hard for me. And it's so disorienting. I I get woozy because of my vertigo. I have vertigo that love it. It just comes and goes whenever it wants to. And uh, boy, it hits me hard. And anyway, we survived. We survived the fucking horse look, ride. Look, two to five percent of the population feel, understand acrophobia or have it. Most of them are women. So I'm, I belong to a tiny percent <laughs> of men who are afraid of heights. I didn't. Wow. I thought that everyone did. <laughs> I thought everyone felt this horror. I know. And like Hendrix and Izzy, when we got down, I was like, were you okay? Were you scared? They were like, they were fucking th- fine. They were psyched. Hendrix was like, that was the best thing I've ever done. That was amazing. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I mean, I was in such a sheer state of panic that I could barely like even focus on the fact that it was like glorious it was glorious i mean this the the view it was incredible they were like look at there's the griffith park observatory there's a hollywood sign look at the canyons down below and i was Uh, like well all i'm seeing is death okay does (laughs) does anyone else just visualize themselves dying in a a terrible collapse right now it was a gorgeous day um it was stunning it was gorgeous i was a little you know, the we hor- have to wrap it up, the don't horse, we? The horse thing, the horse thing, the beasts of burden, the oh, captivity, the that it it, it tweaks me. Yeah. So, so, but thank you for not for, for <laughs> I was really because I've been there's been times in my life where I've been teased mm. for my fears. There's been times like that where. I've it's been used against me, you know, or when people smell that fear on me, they kind of they will attack. Oh, well, I would never do that. I know you wouldn't. Oh. But but, you know, every day presents a new way for me to possibly this is this is I think this way much less. But every day I do feel is a, a new 
opportunity for me to disappoint people who love me and trust in me. I feel that way much less, but that was a test because I really didn't want to lose you there. Not just by plunging off a cliff, but I didn't, I didn't want to lose your, your trust in me. And I didn't want to lose, I didn't want who I am and my fears to undermine our connection in any way. And it can, it can, Mm -hmm. you know, I've been in that position before you and I have managed to come all of this way. And we've, this was such a full circle trip to LA for us. We went back to where we had, where we had come together and where we changed our lives together 12 years ago. And we came back and so many of so many mem- such a rush of memories and a rush of those days when I was not at my best were swirling in my head. And when I was perched on the edge of that cliff on that horse, I just, I was grateful that you and I were there together and that we were able to ex- talk about this and really share how deeply <laughs> fucking freaked out we were. Yes. Oh, God. I was right there with you. Chilled to the bone. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So that was just the, that was just the fucking horse ride. That's just part one, guys. We'll, uh, we'll get into the rest of L.A. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to say. I have so much to say. <laughs> I got to tell you about my flight out there. We'll, tell you, we'll talk about that next time. <laughs> uh. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're so happy to be back, everyone. And uh, thank you for those who missed us. And um, yeah, so we're alive. We survived. I'm going to go pick up Hendrix now. All right. <laughs> Love you. Bye-bye. Raw impressions. Raw impressions.